Hello, welcome to another Married to Reselling video. I am Simon. I'm Faye. And together we are UK resellers, selling on Amazon and eBay. And this video is just kind of what happened this week, starting with picking some orders as usual. Yay. <laughs> Hit you right a pair of shorts so bottoms these are out of my kilo um bag i think oh, i'm still winning on that competition where's the step gone oh the step is outside oh. uh they're denim silvered shorts oh yeah they sold for two pound 40 plus post <laughs> but they cost 43p Well done. We've also got in there, seeing as we have the tub out, a pair of Marlowin black trousers. I could be on the top here. Black Marlowin. There. There we go. Marlowin trousers, twelve. So they were three pound thirty-three. They sold for thirty-five ninety-nine. That's everything out of that tub. Next we have a big button phone. Ooh. I think we sold two phones, didn't we? Yeah, or... sold, one. sold one last week. Oh, is that already gone, is it? Yeah, I don't think it was in the video. Um, oh, okay. But it's the Omni, Omnicom or something. Yeah, is the camera in there as well that we've sold? It is. That's so that's the big button. So the big button phone. That wasn't so good, was it? That one? Um. 3.99 into 10.95 yeah not great and then the camera and this was a canon power shot 3.99 yeah. into 12.99 yeah spares and repairs Did, couldn't get it to power on ah uh, okay fair enough so it was ended up going as parts or not working oh definitely not working now do you want to put the phone over there Right, next, Doddle Baby Box Feeding Kit. Baby? I'm guessing baby. What is it? It's a feeding kit for babies. What's it's that? not, I don't know, it's not clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Where is baby? I don't think you have baby anymore. Oh. oh that's so good. We'll do that one. Okay, that is vintage. Tupperware four piece microwave steamer set cost two ninety nine sold for ten. Not great. No. It's these things that it's that it's that like not everything that's shiny is gold. Well, yeah. Not all not, not all that shines is gold or something. Where's no, this baby thing then? Well I don't know what it I don't even know what oh, it is. Oh we sold that. Oh, we're doing well today. This is a bit out of sync. Uh, Calf Kiss and Bunny in a Box Comfort Soother. Cost a pound. Sold for three forty nine plus post. Wow. It's in a box. A right. branded box. Okay, that's, yeah, that's a bit more help. Is it electrical? No, but you might put it in there. Could it be in bottles? No, it's not in the let. No. No. Health and beauty. I, I literally don't even know what it is. How do I? <laughs> it's just in a brown box. <laughs> yeah, just, what does it do? do it's, it's for feeding babies. I don't know. Like, if we got definitely not got a baby. Um, <laughs> we, we don't have a baby, no. Oh. Um, I've got kids' clothes and Christmas. No. Oh, they sold. They sold on. Did they pay you? Yeah, I think they paid. They sold on my eBay. They're just some baubles that we fell off looking at on our own Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, right. So we're looking for something. We don't know what it is, but it's in a box. A big, bigger box than that. 
It's a cardboard box. Doddle baby box feeding kit for babies. I don't know. We'll find. We'll find. We'll find that later. Okay. <laughs> right. Great. Moving on. Uh, tops C. Tops C. It's a maroon coloured Carhartt American script sweat sweatshirt. Cost six ninety nine. Sold for twenty seven ninety nine. Excellent listed. Oh, Got to stop throwing things. Been listed since May. Then we've got a dress. Um, two dresses actually of this brand. Both Emily and Finn. It's the stripy one and that floral one on top. That one in your hand costs four pounds. Sold for twenty three ninety nine. Going GSP. So this Emily and Finn dress costs five pound and sold for twenty one ninety nine plus post on Vinted. Next, we've got palette 16. Oh, there's baby. So we have got baby. Yes, it's that. That yeah. was an auction item, cost 5 64 sold for £10. That was just a, like an item that was left over from stuff that we bought. Uh, so palette 16. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 16, 15, 16. <laughs> just in there. It's a planet pencil skirt, black size 16. This was from a palette, cost £2.78, sold for £6.79 plus post. So she blows. Nice. Um, let me just see if I've got anything else in that palette. Yep. A white denim jacket. Sheen. Oh, crop jacket blazer. Yep. Yeah, she and uh, cost two seventy eight, sold for two ninety seven plus post. <laughs> this is us getting rid of cheapo stuff now. Which still needs bundling. Yeah. Okay. Then we've got tops H. Uh, <laughs> you can see it. It's turquoise. It's floral. It's nice. Yeah, Paws and Curtis shirt size 10, cost 3.33, sold for 18.39. This is just a week. Then we've got bags. Got the DKMY crossbody bag that cost three pound thirty-three. Yeah, that sold for thirty pounds. British clothing. British clothing again, as was that Hawes and Curtis. Then we've got a mug, vintage Seckler mug, cup, brown, Portuguese, brown, raised 3D design. That cost 99p, sold for £6 plus post on eBay. Nice. Then we got tops J. This sold on vintage. It's a John Lewis Kin t shirt. It's navy blue stripes. Yeah. Smoke. That cost $2.99 and sold for $1.99 plus post. <laughs> oh, hang on, is that M as well? No, we need M. M, M, M. Oh dear, I need a new lid. It's green, like a khaki green, uh, yeah, knitted. It's Massimo Duty. Quite thick. Excel cardigan. Yeah, 
that cost six ninety nine, and sold on Vinted for twenty two nine uh, twenty pound plus post. And then we've got a Christmas jumper. No. Yeah. Where is it? In top. In Christmas at the top there. The top at the back. Oh, it's not the. No. It's navy blue. Well, that's good, isn't it? I was going to say, it's not the Disney Christmas one. It's no. It's been in our top watch for ever. No, it's navy blue. And it's not on a palette. Um. Is it in tops? What brand is it? Oh no, sorry, it's palette six. It's in that branded. Is it in that branded bag? Yep. That Wishing costs you a very merry Christmas. One ninety six and sold for three ninety nine plus post on vintage. LED flying Santa. Yeah. Don't throw it. Santa can fly. <laughs> and that's everything that needed picking, but we've also got some other bits and bobs. So we've got this vintage Jacques Vert blouse which has a uh, building society slash Woolworths vibe. <laughs> yeah. um, this one it sold really, really quickly. Um, that sold within like 24 hours of me listing it. felt like it was only hanging on our washing line the other day. Yeah, well, actually I think it sold like within a couple of hours. That cost three pounds over 17.79. All Saints. Then All Saints peer dress listed that this morning and that sold straight away that was five pound from a garden sale trail that sold for 26.99 and then we just got some cheapo only fools and horses dvds and they sold for 199 plus post cost 27p something like that uh 59p yeah then we've got the what have we got there this was from the kilo sale cost oh, yeah. 150 Sold for ten pound plus post. Plus courier post because it's big and long. It turned out it had a dent in the no, not a dent, like a scuff mark on the back of it. Uh, so that was declared, obviously. And then the stock exchange game, which had quite for quite a while, has been dropping the price, dropping the price. Uh, this sold for twelve thirty two, and it cost five pound. Yeah, so it's twelve thirty two plus. Uh, Career post again because it's too long for a Royal Mail uh, standard parcel. I might actually send these Royal Mail medium parcel actually because the rates have got better. Have them stuck on my printer. I will check them out. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to get you to pick. Yep. Glass cake plates. Oh. Thank goodness. Yeah. Press glass cake plate from the 1940s. It's got a fluted edge, three legs, and it's a sunburst pattern cost 276 i think this is possibly something out of an auction job lot mm -hmm. we've had for uh, 276 since... sounds like it's not a chance of price is no it? we've had that a year june 21 we listed it so for <laughs> 340 plus 375 post uh, stay tuned for messages and kilo sale update the figures and the british youth clothing numbers as well and the usual other stuff. Hi everyone, just wanted to share something with you. I suppose this one's kind of for the trolls. Um, I see people commenting on people's YouTube videos that the sales that they make aren't real, that they're made up somehow. Um, I don't really understand that, uh, but we've had a few. Um, and I think what causes it is that a lot of eBayers use the out of stock option so out of stock option having that switched on just allows you to restock um so something when it goes to available quantity zero it, it stays as active but out of stock and you can just assign more uh, inventory to it so if you're you know replenishing items you can just keep topping it up um and what that does is it sort of throws off the sold um, items a little bit so when you're looking at someone's shop if you like having a little nose at what people sell um, it throws that off a bit so we get comments as I said uh, I'll put a few of them on the screen it's very very strange uh, yeah people's sales are down and all the rest of it um, and I think that that maybe makes people think that if they're not doing well that no one else should be doing well and or even making sales I'm not saying we're doing well we're doing okay um, but when we talk about particular sales it sort of seems to throw 
people off. So I just thought I would um, I'd show you, just in case you like looking at other people's shops, which is absolutely fine. It's good to see what people are selling. Uh, we do it, you know, when you're looking at uh, product research, you can just be typing in like a brand of jeans and clicking sold and seeing what everyone's sold. And that's that's basically what you're doing. So also in terms of like best offer being accepted, that, that sort of seems to be thrown off too. So I've had to sort of zoom in on uh, pages because there's customer details on here uh, like here it's the start of a username I don't want to put those on YouTube uh, but this screen over here or this uh, window this is our shop as it shows what we've sold so you go to our shop click sold uh, ended recently and this is what you'll see on the right hand side over here and then this on the left is our um, orders page from our seller dashboard so this is everything that's sold in order that it's sold starting with the most recent actually uh, there's a few things that have sold today uh, but they haven't won't have made it over the other side yet if that makes sense pointing to the wrong size of the screen i'm sure okay so first off it's showing this bounce off that's sold 1402 with an offer um, accepted 299 postage now the thing is about this one is um, it hasn't actually been paid for yet you can see a waiting payment but it's saying that we've sold it. Um, the next one it's showing that we've sold is this Air France cutlery. And that's all the way down here somewhere. There it is, right down there. Uh, that sold on the first. Well, it was delivered on the first of July, and it's showing that it sold on the sixth of July. Uh, next one, the Cherished Teddies. That's up here. So that's showing that it was sold on offer. That it was priced at five ninety four, and it sold for uh, on offer, uh, and that did sell. Uh, there it is. I sold there. Uh, Battlefield One. So that's showing that it sold for 148 well it didn't it sold for 99 pence and that's down here somewhere uh, there it is I can't I don't want to scroll across because it's going to show these names um, whether or not you believe me that it sold for 99p I don't know why I say it sold for cheaper than it did uh, but it did uh, so there we go and then the next one it shows that sold is captioned clothing which is right back up here and you'll notice I'm scrolling past quite a bit of stuff um, and that's kind of the point of me making this video. It just doesn't show everything. There's the caption clothing on on your sold shop uh, Next men motorcycle it used to just show auctions um, and things of with more than one quantity, but all of this stuff uh, The vast 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 majority of it. Uh, we only had one quantity of uh, So there's something's changed there as well. There's the t-shirt uh, the next thing it's showing is the Ravensburger Cottage puzzle. That's up here somewhere. Um, there it is. And these are interesting. These co hangers showing that they sold at uh, 19 99 Well, they didn't. They sold at £15. They were on an offer. Uh, and they sold at £15. Um, what else have we done? got uh, Hornsey Bowls they sold down here somewhere I think hopefully there they are and then the next thing after the Hornsey Bowls is the phone cards now they sold on the 27th of June and I'm still way in July here uh, I know these are the dispatch dates but whoops wrong one so find all the way down all the way down there they are the bt phone cards so that's 27th of june then there's 27th of june again 27th of june so there's a whole like well today is the 7th of july so that's what 10 10 days or whatever that is so i started getting some interference on the audio of that main video so i'm just sort of voicing over the last part so i was just going on to say you know, it's definitely something broken. If you're looking at other people's listings and relying on that information and wondering what's going on, um, you know, don't worry about it. I've seen people say that people that put their sales on YouTube, they delete their souls, they delete their, uh, it, 
that's not going on. That's not actually possible. Um, they're using the out of stock option. Yeah, it's not a big conspiracy. It's uh, it's just how it works. All right, little uh, sales update for you. Our kilo sale thing pickup. Um, we spent forty three p an item, and we sold a few things. Total profit is sixty six pound eighty three. Faith sold seven things. This doesn't include the games that I bought because they were £1.50. They're not included in this. This is clothing kilos. Um, so Faith sold seven things. I sold five. Uh, she's profit of £51. I'm profit of £15. Uh, there you go. Uh, profit's profit. Doesn't take long for Faye to list stuff. She's got it down to a T, haven't you? Yeah. It's just a nice little trip. And we, we have no regrets. Yeah. And we've got £6.88 worth of unsold stock still still so we've still got 16 items i think it is uh yeah unsold okay our british used clothing update we originally had 20 items we've sold nine which is 45 percent of our target a total profit of 92 pounds and 8p and we have unsold stock cost of 36 pounds 67 yeah so we sort of sold half of it so if we sell the other half for 92 pound profit um We'll be pretty happy with that. Yeah. Here in the video, I thought I'd just pop in some information about the whole Germany packaging thing that everybody's talking about. Uh, I put some stories on Instagram, got really good reaction to the information that I'd shared. Uh, loads of people have sort of shared more since and have already shared stuff and what have you. Uh, and I promised that I would give a bit of an update. So I'm going to pop the stories in now. It's going to seem a bit weird because they're taken straight off Instagram. It might be a bit jumpy, the screen will be small. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to play that and then I'm going to give you a bit of an update. Just want to talk to you about the German Packaging Act. Don't switch off, please, um, if you've seen a lot about this over the last few days. There's a lot of bad information out there and I'll tell you why. So if you're not aware of what it is, just very quickly, if you are shipping to Germany via any marketplace and your uh, parcels are leaving you and ending up in Germany, then you need to register um, on the, it's called the Lucid Register, something like that. Um, and it's just monitoring the packaging, like plastics and what have you, that are going into Germany. Now, if you're the sort of person that likes to fly by the seat of their pants, then you just do you. Uh, but for everyone else, um, I would suggest just listening to the next few slides. Um, so you've got two choices if you ship to Germany. If you don't ship to Germany, uh, then it doesn't matter. You either need to register, but you've got some paperwork to do and you're gonna to have to pay a fee. Uh, there's other countries that do this, but most of us will be way, way, way under the threshold and that's probably why uh, it's not come up before. But there will be companies, I think Sweden, uh, a few others, but there'll be companies shipping to that to those locations that are already sort of well aware of all of this sort of stuff uh, but for us it's just come up hasn't it um because ebay have sort of told us we need to do it if your sales to germany are under i don't know 50 pound a month it's probably not even worth doing um, but your choices are register that's you done um, or you can switch off your shipping to germany and whatever marketplaces you sell in so for us it's etsy and ebay uh, we don't do um, uh, international shipping on Amazon. So I'll put a quick slide in on how to turn off shipping on eBay uh, to Germany uh, via GSP anyway. We don't do our own international shipping. And if you sell on Etsy, it's a little bit different. Um, but if you're not sure how to do that, if you're international on Etsy, just send us a message or something. So just go into your business policies, uh, pick your shipping policies if you've got more than one or your postage policies. Um, good excuse to get them tidied up because you're going to need to go through for each one that you've got GSP or international activated. Uh, just click edit and then go to your exclusion uh, list. You see I've already got it in there and you can just go to Europe and then tick where you want to exclude, uh, click apply and save it. So this all came into effect as of the 1st of July. There seems to be a lot of people saying, well, I use GSP, so it doesn't matter. And I've spoke to eBay and they said it's fine. Well, look again, I'll put some slides up uh, now of 
some communication from eBay. So that first slide was from the 20th of April, and that's on the eBay community page, uh, and that's someone who works for eBay uh, in the community page saying that uh, GSP doesn't exempt you from having to do it. And then the second one uh, was from just a couple of days ago, because they're obviously getting a lot of questions about it, uh, confirming the same. Um, also, in the um, on the eBay uh, sort of help page about it, it says... Uh, the German Packaging Act affects business sellers whose items end up with private consumers in Germany. And that's the key, items end up. Now, if you ship to Germany, if you have German shipping switched on, then you are uh, aiming for sales in Germany. You're aiming for your items to send uh, over to Germany. Uh, so that makes you uh, responsible for uh, registering. Uh, and then I went on eBay for Business this morning on Facebook. And just thought I'd ask the question just because I knew I was going to be putting these stories up. Uh, so I'll just share their response too. So for any of you that have made it this far through the stories, got something to share with you. Um, and that is the, the fines if you get caught out. And I'll share this with you. Um, but basically, failing to comply with these obligations can result in monetary fines of up to €200,000. Now, don't forget, eBay is sharing this information. Who's on the register? Who's not? Who's shipping to Germany? Who's not? So if you are shipping to Germany and you are not on the register, you are leaving yourself wide open. And also, the register is visible to the public so that any competitor uh, can identify if you are or aren't registered. Um, and that could lead to all sorts of problems. And I think I mentioned right back in the beginning of these stories, feels like a long time ago, it's only a few minutes, um, that people can sort of still use freight forwarders. So, you know, if you if you only do UK shipping, that doesn't stop a customer uh, sending to like a forwarding company in the UK and having that sent to whatever address, address uh, around the world. Now that doesn't affect you, um, but I thought, I would contact a few of those companies and see what they said about it. You know, I wanted to see what they said. If I, you know, so I said, oh, I'm a business customer. I want to ship items to Germany. Um, but uh, do we use your Lucid register um, or, or ours? Uh, bearing in mind, if you do get a sale like that, you haven't um, sort of advertised delivery to Germany. You're not shipping it to Germany. You're shipping it within the UK. So it's not your responsibility. There's nothing you can do if someone puts that on a plane and sends it wherever in the world. Yeah, so um, that company hadn't even heard of it, uh, which is uh, in, just insane, isn't it? I don't really know what their responsibility would be. Um, who knows? You know, that's a bit of a grey area, isn't it? There you go, that's, that's what they said. So, um, hopefully this has helped if you are confused about the whole subject, which is understandable. Um, but if you do a bit of digging. At the end of the day, if you don't sell much to Germany anyway, you really haven't got much to lose by switching it off or registering. But if you don't do anything, um, you know, then I've already read out <laughs> what you could lose. Uh, so there you go, hope that helped, bye. Since I made that video, I had a few people sort of messaging with little bits of information and stuff, but also there was things I didn't mention because you can never mention everything whenever you want to, you just can't think of it all. Um, but one of the things that came up was that there was talk that eBay were gonna remove um, the ability to ship to Germany if you didn't have the Lucid Register uh, number input into your eBay account. Now, I think a few people were maybe riding on that, but that's definitely not the case because I've seen a few examples of people on Instagram and Facebook saying, I've just sold something to Germany and I had Germany deselected, um, eBay have let one through or whatever. Uh, so clearly they're still allowing shipping to Germany whether or whether not you've got that Lucid register done. Um, don't forget if you have previously used the tick box for eBay to override GSP prices, you've got to go into your shipping settings and untick that box. It's in a different place to your business policies. You've got to find shipping settings uh, and there's a box which will allow them to override your GSP. Uh, so you need to untick that if that's giving you any problems.
The other thing that I did talk about in the video that you've just watched is other sites. So again, a lot of people start saying, it doesn't matter to me because I'm GSP, so I don't need to do anything. But don't forget, you're probably selling on other sites as well. If you're selling on Etsy, you're gonna to need to do something about Etsy. So, saw someone, I think it was sold on Vestier and that went to Germany and they were like, oopsie, how do I switch that off? So, you know, just have a think about all of that. Um, and ultimately, you know, the, the decision to make, no one can tell you whether you should ship to Germany or not. And the just thing, is it worth it? You know, is, is, do you sell much to Germany? If you don't, I would advise sort of looking into it and either shutting it down or registering uh, for that. So there's that. What's your favourite section of our videos? Messages. Mm, well, that's good because I've got one for you. Okay then. Uh, hi, I received item today. Shirts are used, washed and ironed, repackaged and put tag on. It's not brand new smell. If used, you have to mention it's used. Very disappointed. It was just for a bundle of rubbish men's tops. Um, which were new? Which were new? <laughs> Like, sealed packaging yeah tags. we did we we hadn't even taken them Faye had even said in the listing that she wasn't 100 percent sure whether they were jumpers or uh if they weren't they were t-shirts because they hadn't even come out of the packaging um you know un undoubtedly but there you go anyway so they had a refund and uh then they resold next one do you want to read this one <sighs> yeah so do you remember the person who Got, this is in our last video. Do you know it's a month since we've made one of these videos? Are you joking? No. Apologies. So sorry. Uh, if you remember that far back, uh, there was a girl who bought a jigsaw and it was like the different one to what was in the box and she wanted to send it back and then she, in the end, didn't send it back and said, I've thrown it in the bin. Uh, anyway, about, pff, forgot all about it, obviously, and then about two weeks later, she sent a message saying, can you send me a returns label because I can't print them? And I said, you know, sorry, but you didn't return it within the period. It's been shut down. Uh, you need to contact eBay. And I just always say contact eBay because I don't want to, sort of, my job is done. That was the end of that then. So we just kind of said, sorry, goodbye. You know, you had your chance. Uh, and that was the end of that. But uh, yeah, she tried it on again. All right, next. Hi, item seems to have been delivered. When I look on the tracking, but I haven't received the collection reference, can you send it through or chase eBay to send it through, please? This was a click and collect. It was actually, it was a Joe Lister, so it was something that was purchased on eBay that was cross-listed from Amazon. So Amazon had shipped it to a click and collect address. I think it was a Sainsbury's. Uh, for whatever reason, once that's done and delivered at Sainsbury's, it's, you know, there's nothing more we can do, but for whatever reason, they didn't get a notification or something or other, um, and they were trying to involve us. So I just kind of said, um, you know, just go back to eBay and work it out with them. Uh, they then opened a item not received case. I just uploaded the tracking, didn't need to do anything else. And then eBay shut it in our favor. They probably uh, refunded the customer as well. Not really bothered as long as we weren't out of pocket. Um, that's the way to handle those. Yeah, and well, we've got another one. Oh no, this is a good one. This one. So you know when you've sold a breakable, and then you're just minding your own business, getting on with your day, and then you see a message pops up, and you don't see what the message says, but you just see what the item is, and you're like, no. So this was the Secla. Mug, was it yeah, a mug? Yeah, the brown, like 3D yeah. fruit mug. Yeah, uh, but thankfully they just messaged to let us know that it arrived safely. Uh, incidentally, I don't think they left us feedback, which we would have much preferred it to have been that way around. Leave us feedback, don't bother messaging us. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, uh, the heart skips a beat and mm -hmm. uh, it's always nice, I guess, to hear that things have arrived safely. Yeah, thanks to your very efficient packaging, Malcolm says. <laughs> Right, and then we have, hi mate, I've not received the item, but it says it's delivered. This was a DKMY handbag from British Youth Clothing actually, mm. sold for I think 30 pounds. So we replied with, hi, many thanks for your messages. Please could you check the two attachments? If you have any further questions, please let me know. Take care. So I can't put the two attachments on the screen, but there was, it was basically a screenshot of uh, it saying it was delivered with the proof of delivery with the signature and the name and the other one was the GPS coordinates of the delivery location which exactly matched the delivery address. So we sent that through a couple of days later. They wrote back and said that's not me, completely different signature. 
so I just told them to open an item not receive case because I know if they do that, I can upload the tracking and again, my job's done. Uh, it's then down to eBay to deal with. Uh, if you're thinking, well, that's not very good service, um, that's fine, I, I sort of get that, but I don't have another bag to send. I'm not refunding them because as far as I'm concerned, it's been delivered, but eBay will give the customer the benefit of the doubt. If they say they haven't received it, eBay will trust them and eBay will refund out of their own pocket. And that is the way I like it. Yeah. Well, I like it too. <laughs> We've got a few more things. We've got to get them packed quick. It's a bit later in the week and I've just been out, out and about. about the wholesaler and bits and pieces. So topping up the incense sticks and what have you. Uh, so yeah, what have we got? We have got a paperweight. Case Nest Streamers Art Glass Paperweight Pink. Ooh, cost... sold a paperweight for a while, have we? No, it's cost two pound fifty. Got it in a charity shop. Sold for seventeen ninety nine. I know it's called Streamers because it says it on the bottom. It's beautiful. I'll put a lovely picture up. Yes. Because it's wrapped in this beautiful grey <laughs> bubble wrap <laughs> with brown tape. Right next, Artino shoulder rest for a violin. Oh, here the other day. That's handy. Nice one. I got that from a charity shop. That was when we saw Sonia. Actually, I picked that up. Oh yes. Uh, paid four pounds. Sold for twenty six ninety nine. I think. Mm. Uh, yeah. Then we have the Air France cutlery. The rest of the Air France cutlery. Ah. Oh, now the right out of that didn't you? Well, yeah, this one not so much. It's just these are like the last bits. Five pound fifty three. The cost price worked out at. It sold for eleven. Yeah, but you bought the whole lot for like fifteen quid, didn't you? Yeah. And um, we, I think we must have done probably sixty quid or something in it. Oh, Maybe more. Maybe more actually. That stuff. There we yeah. go. Oh. Then we've got in tops, L, I think it's in the tub or it could be in the bag waiting to go away. It's a red cardigan, long tall Sally. I'm thinking, it's, oh, hang on. What's under that white one? This. Yeah. Long tall Sally, cardigan, nice. L. Cost 5.25, sold for 14.99, not great. I don't know how, how that ended up so low. 525, but it's only been listed this month. Uh what was the starting price? 26.99. What happened? <laughs> so this is the low. Right, okay, cool. Right, maybe. Oh, uh, we did we did sell a what was it, a hoodie? No, a jacket. Oh for two pounds. I was messing around with pricing and what we've decided is uh, we do top rated seller plus, which is where you have to dispatch first class. You have to offer a um, expedited delivery for under a tenner and send items over £20 tracked. I think that's it. And be top rated seller. Um, but always for lower value stuff. I just haven't bothered with that. They've always just been second class. Um, but then I just thought for lower value stuff, I might as well just add postage have a lower unit price so I was messing around with a few and one of them like slipped up because it had an offer out on it so the price went down but the postage didn't add on so we sold a puffer jacket that should have gone out for about eight quid which was still low but it was just an old old rubbish thing it was brand new tags but it wasn't anything special and it went out for I think £2.54 yeah. free post we yeah. did get great feedback though the other day oh, yesterday did we? yeah saying it was a great price yeah and came the next day oh enjoy <laughs> there you go Right. Uh, anyway. Next up's another one that's gone too cheap. Uh, the Ziggle shirt, extra large. Uh, cost eight pounds, sold for fourteen ninety nine. You just changing all the new stuff to fourteen ninety nine or no. what? <laughs> no. What was that listed at originally then? Twenty nine ninety nine. In May. That listed May. No. Right. We'll find it then. <laughs> D. What is it? A top. Shirt. Men's shirt. Find it and think about what you've done. <laughs> um, I mean, I've done a couple of sort of 10 to 15 percent price drops since May. Um, is it under the desktop? What colour is it? Oh, I can see it. It's there. That's ooh, stripey. Stripey. No, stripey. Men's shirt. That stripey. Yeah, but that's not a men's shirt. See those stripes? 
Yeah. That's it. Next, we've got a vintage Kernawek chicken hen egg holder. It's right behind you on the shelf. That cost three forty nine, sold for eight quid. No, it didn't no. really. <laughs> it sold for seventeen ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, next we have the Majolica jug, which we're not 100% sure if it is Majolica, so we had an offer of £10, so we took it, it cost £2.95. Um, yeah. Then we've got a Disney mug. Yes, that one. The, the mom, mom one. Mom. Walt Disney World original, four parks, uh, one world 3D monorail. Cost £5, sold for £26.99. Nice, yeah, I'm guessing with the price drops, because we have 10% off at the moment, so I'm thinking they must have had a couple of 15% price drops in like a month. Don't know what happened to the one that was listed in June, unless it was very early June, and then they got 10% off, but... It wasn't very early June. I'll be honest, I just want to move stuff, you know? Yeah. Do cool. you want to move stuff? So there we go. G-Shock watch which we picked up when we were away for a couple of days back in March time I think mm. it was and the cost of the watch plus the battery I paid to be put in it uh, was $7.99 and that sold for £59.39 so I'm glad I took the risk on that one because yeah it was decent wasn't it yeah it really was um, but there's been loads of bric-a-brac sale um, sold some shoes I think uh, clothes bits and bobs um, have sold it's been all right isn't it mm. that brings us to the end of this video uh, i hope you liked it if so please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've got any questions uh, we're open to hearing them so uh, comment below or contact us over on instagram where we're married to reselling over there as well and uh, just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon bye for now bye